Hey everyone, and welcome to Worried About Nothing. Today we decided to talk about protests. It's such a relevant topic right now and a hot topic with all the protests that are happening. And we have Kim, who actually went to one of them in London. So she has lots of personal experiences to talk about. I'm Katya. I'm Danielle. And I'm Kim. And welcome. So yeah, I went to the protest yesterday at Trafalgar Square, which was one of many that were happening around the world yesterday, which is incredible to to know that while you were there as well. And it was an amazing experience. It was so beautiful. There were, I think, different reports of numbers, but I think it was somewhere between 35 and 40,000 people, which um, for Trafalgar Square is, it was absolutely packed because it's a square in the middle of lots of streets. So there's a limited amount of people that can join, but it was was shoulder to shoulder. Nobody was wearing a mask. Everyone was talking to each other. Everyone was hugging. It was like normal human interaction that we've all forgotten through this lockdown. It was just a very moving and very beautiful experience. There are a number of speakers there, doctors, nurses, other people that have been very involved in the the whole movement. And just listening to everyone speaking was really really profoundly moving because it was just truth people speaking truth people talking of unity and freedom and love being surrounded by 40,000 people all cheering and laughing and screaming and hugging each other and singing was just amazing and it was just great to see how people are just done done with all this bullshit done with all the restrictions and lies and manipulation And it was really inspirational to see some of these speakers talking because a lot of them are part of the medical profession and they've been struck off or they've been suspended or they've been in some way shamed professionally. But they were still up there speaking. They were up there spreading truth, talking about what is really happening with COVID and with a lot of other things too. It was a really peaceful protest, nothing happened. But yet there was a huge police presence as well. So there were... They sent a helicopter early on, so it was just really ominously flying really low above us, very, very slowly, you know, in a kind of like a war movie type thing. Um, And there were police surrounding us. The entire place was just surrounded by police. And um, all the organisers were sent texts saying, you know, you have to cease and desist now. We're going to fine you £10,000. We're going to arrest you. You know, they um, confiscated some of the equipment. We had some speakers who weren't there, who were international speakers, but the police confiscated the screen and the audiovisual equipment, so we couldn't see them. But it was fine. It didn't, none of it mattered. And it was just a very, very moving day. It was just full of love, full of hope, and just full of pushback. It was a no more. We're not, we're not taking this anymore. You know, David Icke was there, and he's an incredible speaker when you see him live. I'd seen the videos of him speaking, and he's very well spoken, and you can see the charisma, but when you're actually there, within not touching distance but you know you can see him in your in his presence he is so charismatic it was incredible and he just got the crowd going absolutely wild and it was just I was watching him speaking and I remember I was talking to my friend that I went with yesterday to the protest and we remember seeing him in an interview on the show called Wogan way back it was in the 80s I think and it was way back when he first started to coming to light and he wore turquoise and he was talking about what he talks about now And he was just so publicly shamed. And the whole of the UK since then has just seen him as a laughing stock. He's really held up as this ridiculous figure. Yet he still carries on talking. He still carries on doing it. He still carries on speaking truth. And that was just really, really moving and very inspirational to see and witness and and experience. And, you know, those of us who have been really quiet through all of this and are not standing up for the things that we believe in. Seeing people out there who are putting everything on the line, career, life, reputation, whatever it is, to share the truth with people kind of puts us all to shame because in our own ways, we should all be doing something. We can all be doing something, even if it is just going to a protest, you know, it's just taking some kind of action makes all of the difference. Because I was surprised at the number of people that came yesterday. I wasn't expecting, I didn't have an idea of how many I was expecting, but, you know, 40,000 people I was not expecting. And there were loads of Q supporters there as well, you know, and and it was just fantastic, very difficult to put into words. And um, I took some videos throughout the day 
and some photos. And I got so excited. My first video was of people's feet. <laughs> I think I didn't realize I was filming. And I posted, I was like, yeah, you know, it was all carried away in the moment. And then later that day, I kind of looked through what I'd posted. It was like, oh, um, people's feet. I've got 45 likes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> People going, awesome, woo! And I was like, okay, that's it. <laughs> but one of the things I recorded was David Icke's speech, which was about 11 minutes or something. And I just checked in it just now on Facebook, and it's been seen five and a half thousand times, my video, been shared over 300 times by people I don't know, and liked several hundreds, you know, and I'm not kind of one of these people that's out there. I'm nobody when it comes to all of this kind of thing, but I was just really surprised. It was like, wow. And then some of the people who organized it all and some of the more well-known people that were taking part, you know, they recorded it as well. And that was seen 20,000 times, shared thousands and thousands of times. But it really shows how many people are interested, how many people are behind this that may not have been able to make it, you know, physically yesterday. But there was just this huge flurry of support and interest on Facebook and on social media when I was posting stuff, including people's feet. But that was really heartwarming as well. You know, so it feels like, and it's not just in London, it's all around the world. There was what, Berlin and Auckland and Paris, I think, and Toronto or Ottawa. Ottawa, mm -hmm. Ottawa yeah. That people had just done this. It was just this mass uprising and it was just incredible to be part of. Really, really life-changing or one in, once in a lifetime experience. It was, there, it's difficult to put words to it, but it was amazing. Oh, Kim, yeah, sounds great. Yeah. Especially when you have such a big yeah. turnout. I think it was a big turnout everywhere because I heard Berlin, it was supposed to be, people were talking at the protest yesterday, but people were saying there was between one and five million people that turned up at Berlin. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is incredible. I don't know if that's true or not. I've seen the news saying 22,000, but I don't know if it's what kind of news those are. It could yeah. be the mainstream media, right? And, you know, they always reduce the number substantially yeah because i saw some mainstream media reports about yesterday in london and they were saying it was a few thousand and it was nearer forty thousand. so i think you know they do tend to kind of lower the numbers so i don't know how many there were but robert kennedy was speaking there i would have loved to have seen that but it seems like people are coming out in big numbers all around the world and it's just it really does feel like there's this huge movement of change as well and people were following along on social media as it was happening live and all of that it just feels like there's a change in the air which is fantastic. One of the reasons for the protests yesterday in London is on a time-sensitive thing because the government is going to get together and vote on whether to extend the COVID laws by another two years in September. So that's one of the reasons they staged the protest yesterday is just to encourage anybody and everybody who disagrees with all these laws to write to their MPs, write to the Prime Minister, you know, write to Boris or whoever, do whatever they can to try and stop this because... Another two years of this kind of law, these restrictions, is just unacceptable. They're getting more and more specific with the things you can and can't do. Yeah. The net's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. So now is the time to just push back against it. Because it's people standing together. It's like David Icke was saying yesterday. You know, united is where the power is. We have the power if we all stand together. And it's so true because I know it was 40,000 people, not millions, but even 40,000 people coming together and breaking all the laws that say you can't do this kind of thing and not caring because we believe so strongly that what we were doing was right. And more, the more and more people that do that, the less and less they can do. Like yesterday, we were breaking the law. We were surrounded by police. By rights, they could have come in and arrested us all and fined us all because that's what the law said, but they didn't. There were too many of us. You know, there was maybe a hundred and something police there and 40,000 of us. Yeah. You know, the majority carries the rule, you know. And I think the more people that do that, the less the police are going to be able to do. That's amazing. I heard somewhere in Berlin, that's what I read, that actually they were ready to call the protest off, but the judges actually allowed it. So that was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. And they didn't say, judges didn't say anything about masks. So that was interesting that the judges themselves supported protesters. That's amazing. Yeah, no, it is fantastic. I think people in power in some ways are showing their support in ways they can. I don't know. 
But it was just amazing because yesterday it was just, it was protesting against everything that is wrong with what's going on in the world right now. You know, it wasn't just masks. It wasn't just COVID. You know, there were people speaking out against the child trafficking, against corruption in government, all of this stuff. And David Icke obviously was talking about what he's been talking about for years and years. And when you're on social media or you're talking to a few friends, you get that sense that there are people that agree with what you believe in or, or stand by you, stand with you, but actually physically experiencing it. You know, being in a crowd of 40,000 people, every single one of whom agrees 100% with what you believe in, was in some ways awe-inspiring just to have that physical experience of it. So people were cheering at exactly the same things and there was no kind of, you know, you must cheer now kind of thing. You know, people were. And I think I posted on Facebook that, I think the biggest cheer of the day came when one of the doctors, because I've got this group of doctors that are getting together and they're really trying to overthrow all these rules and change things. And, and one of them said, and we're going to put Bill Gates in prison for his crimes against humanity. And the entire crowd just went absolutely mental. I've never heard so much noise in my life. It was just so powerful what people's passions and beliefs can do. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What did they say in the main media about the protests? really not seen much and it's just been along the lines of a few thousand people gathered these dangerous hoax encouraging people who are spreading covid and then there's an excuse to put all the fake numbers about covid deaths and vertical commas increase in covid cases last year yeah exactly exactly but surprisingly not covered much by the news at all or unsurprisingly i don't know depending on which way you look at it It's funny, though, because at Trafalgar Square is, in London is one of the places where protests tend to happen. And usually with any other protest, the media would be out in mass force. You know, you'd have vans and you'd have cameras and you'd have all sorts of people. And this time, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Not a single newspaper in the UK? That's Not that I know. Oh, interesting. Not that I know of. I mean, there may have been some that I just haven't heard of yet, but... But normally you'd see them, you know, you'd see the presence there because there'd be all these cameramen and microphones and all of this. And, and maybe even helicopters, but the only helicopter we had was the, the police one. Yeah, that's interesting. All the protests, how they're being played down. Mm. And um, it doesn't help the regular people to wake up to, but of course that's the goal, right? But people don't see, don't know anything about it. Yeah. But it is crazy though, because, you know, then there was a march afterwards and everyone walked to Downing Street to, you know, the Prime Minister's home and um, the entire street was full of people. I mean, basically during the march, you know, parts of London were, the traffic was cut off, obviously, because people were walking down the streets and nothing on that, you know, it's just, it's insane. Because the only things you see are what people filmed themselves, you know, and posted on social media. But social media is now so powerful, so hopefully it will take off. Yeah. And it is being posted a lot on social media. So, you know, it is, the, in some ways, social media is kind of the new news channels. But it's funny, the reaction, the backlash, you know, there's been such a fear backlash. You know, I looked on Twitter yesterday just for a few seconds because I didn't want to spend much longer because it was just all, oh, my God, Trafalgar Square. You know, the hashtag Trafalgar Square was, I don't know if it was trending, but it was definitely popular. And it was just people responding out of fear. And it was all, oh, these stupid people doing this and they're killing everyone. And people getting very offensive as well. So some people were saying, this group of people that gathered in Trafalgar Square, they're the kind of people that sit by people's deathbeds and laugh when they die, this kind of thing. And it was like, wow, vicious. You know, it wasn't just, oh, my God, fear. These people are gathering. It's scary. They're spreading COVID. It was, you know, really personal attacks. It just shows how much fear people have. And how much attack they're willing to almost kill somebody for not wearing a mask because they're just acting so much out of fear. And they don't even see that. That's the problem. They don't even recognize it. They think that they're doing good. They think that they're saving all the elderly population. and They're just being so brainwashed without even realizing it. Yeah, it's frightening. But without even thinking that... Uh, Some people, you know, lost their jobs. They've been arrested. They're standing for you. They're standing for the kids. And you don't even want to see it. Just open your heart a little bit. Yeah. And just think bigger. You know, like David Icke said yesterday, he, had, he spoke to the police that were surrounding us. And he just said, 
you are defending a world where your children and grandchildren are going to have to bear the consequences or live with the consequences of all of this that's going on. So why not join us? Why are you inflicting this upon your future generations? And it's true because there still seems to be such a widespread belief that these lockdowns and all these measures are for our own good. And once they're lifted, everything will go back to normal. And it's not the case. It's not going to happen because the economy's tanked. So many people are out of work that if there is a second lockdown, which I hope there isn't, but if there is, that's going to even have more destructive effects on the entire world. And nothing's going to go back to normal as in the way it was before. This isn't just a temporary few months to save the world by wearing masks and staying indoors. It's not, that's not the way it works. It's destruction. As David Icke was talking about so clearly as he does, this is a fascist regime that we're living under and everyone's accepting it because it was introduced so gradually and so slowly and all for the greater good. And that's just such bollocks. That's just such bullshit. It's not for the greater good, but people will believe that. Think they're helping other people. Think that they are doing good and condemning people who are standing up against it without even thinking about it, without even knowing what they're, you know, in some ways knowing what they're doing or being aware of what's happening. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit fired up because I'm still kind of, you know, I it just know, came from and, and that's what we <laughs> want to hear, all the energy behind all these protests. And you were there, Kim. I wish I could attend one of these. There was one in Calgary, but there's only a few people showing up. And I was with two kids. I was like, oh, I'm not driving. There's two little kids to the protest, so... You can't do that, no, not to a protest, no. But the difference, though, because some of the people that were speaking yesterday, they got up and spoke, they were saying that one of them called a protest back in March when it all started, and there were eight people there, because nobody believed. Everyone was so following the narrative. But the contrast between, you know, March and now, eight people and 40,000 people, plus more than 40,000 people, I'm sure some people couldn't make it that wanted to be there, is brilliant. It just shows that people are just starting to see through all the lies. It was so nice to be back in a normal environment with crowds of people where you didn't have to duck away because you got closer than two meters and they were scared they might touch you. So people were touching and hugging and laughing and talking to each other and sharing information. There was no mask wearing. There was none of this ridiculous restriction. It was wonderful. At one point we were saying it kind of felt like a concert because we were all singing along and swaying, you know, and it was just, it was just wonderful, really wonderful. Beautiful. Yeah, I saw the video that you posted of David Icke and I was like, oh my God, because I remember listening to him a number of years ago and I know like the amount of ridicule that he had from the public. So it's like the fact that he's speaking out like to crowds in public. I'm like, this is amazing. This is like David Icke going mainstream. <laughs> you know, I was just like kind of blown away. I didn't get a chance to watch the video you posted, but I saved it for later because I really wanted to see what he had to say. He's so good. He is so good. And his followers are, are getting bigger and bigger because he's been he's done quite a lot of speaking in large events. So there's been some auditoriums full of people, you know, and so the, the following is getting bigger and, and is very, very loyal. And he's a very good speaker as well, which doesn't hurt him. And he knows how to whip up a crowd as well. But just astonishing that this man has been doing this and so tirelessly fighting for what he believes is true for so many years despite the amount of ridicule and you know contempt and even yesterday on twitter people were saying oh my god these stupid lunatic crazy insane people gathering at trafalgar square wanting to kill everyone and oh look their leader is david ike oh my god how pathetic is that all this sort of stuff you know and it's really really condescending and very derogatory and i read a few of them and i just remember thinking oh my god I used to think that, you know, 30 years ago, I remember when I first saw him on Wogan on this TV show, I didn't know anything. I mean, 30 years ago, I was still a child, but I kind of, I remember watching it going, oh, that's so weird. This man is talking such strange stuff because I didn't know better. And I think that's the key that is that sometimes people believe this stuff because they don't know better, you know, whereas all these doctors and people that are doing all of this amazing work are doing it so that people have more information. People have a different viewpoint than just the viewpoint of their parents or what they've been brought up to believe, you know. Or the media. Yeah. Yeah, that too. And maybe, hopefully, you know, the more that people speak out and the more that people talk truth and give facts, those that don't know better and just believe things because they are conditioned to believe them might have the opportunity to see a different side, to 
rethink their beliefs. I mean, some people won't, you know, the people that are very condemning and derogatory probably won't. But I think it's so important for all of us to speak out and do what we can. It's not enough just to be quiet and like a couple of posts on Facebook. There's action needs to be taken, you know, in whatever form. But I just feel that, you know, if, if those that are doing it so publicly can do it, the rest of us have no excuse for not doing it in our own small way. Mm. Yeah, it's important mm. to spread the message to get more people on board, especially those that they just don't know. It's not that they don't want to believe in anything, they just don't know any better. Because if you read the mainstream media and you're not necessarily looking specifically for the information, then you won't be able to find it. And if all your friends and your family, that's all they talk about and they're acting out of fear, that's all you know. So if other people start spreading the truth, then you might think, okay, what are they talking about? Is there something in there? They might go and investigate and you never know. Yeah, which is why I'm so glad so many people filmed what happened yesterday. So there's so many different angles on it, you know, different speakers recorded and David Icke recorded from all angles. <laughs> you know, everyone had a camera. When I was recording it with my phone, it was really hard to kind of focus on him because there was a sea of phones just held in the air. But it's, it's so important. It's so important. Yeah, I'd say it's the next best thing to being there is having people who like yourself, you know, who went and recorded it because I don't trust anything that I see that's like professionally produced. So if I see like a video that's taken by someone, I'm more likely to, you know, at least accept what's happening in the clip, not necessarily all the context people like to place around the clip, but it's really helpful to see something and be like, oh, okay, wow. Yeah. There were so many people there. Oh, like, <laughs> and the fact that it was so much video too, it's not just like a picture of a sea of people because it's like that could have been from any place, any time sort of thing, or at least any time. Yeah, definitely. And I think that people have to be careful with that as well because I saw a couple of people posting photos. They claimed it was from Trafalgar Square yesterday and I was there and I know it, they weren't. So the photos were of a different building or they were off a different day because the weather was different, you know, so... I think you always have to be careful, like you say, to trust what you trust and what you believe. Because one of the photos I saw on Facebook said there were a million people in Trafalgar Square and they showed a photo of, A, not Trafalgar Square. I don't even know if it was the UK, actually. It didn't look like it. And it was a completely different day. And it was just um, a publicity thing. And that really doesn't do any good whatsoever because it's just another excuse for people to go, oh, they're liars, because that is obviously a lie. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this was done on purpose. Maybe. I didn't think that, but maybe, yeah. Because I don't know the person who posted it, so it may well have been discrediting. Well, it's interesting. Now Bill Gates is talking about bioweapons, right? That's his next prediction. So <laughs> one day he'll be behind the prison. Yeah. 40,000 people would be very happy about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or there's more. So there's more yeah. protests happening around the world, and hopefully more people will wake up. Yeah. But it's great that this happened yesterday because even like a month ago, I, I wouldn't have been able to see it happening. You know, not in that, not in the volume and numbers and different locations. And it's interesting that it all happened on the same day. I don't know whether it was organized that way or I guess it must have been organized that way globally. But it's interesting to think who did, who organized all of that. It was amazing that they did. Yeah, that's a good question, because I, I know what we had heard of, about the one that was happening in Berlin, so that's like kind of the first one I was aware of. I didn't realize that there were going to be so many happening at the same time. So yeah, it is kind of interesting that they all happened on the same day. I wonder if it had something to do with the date. I feel like there was some relevancy to the date yesterday, but I don't know, yeah. Because it was, what, the 29th of August, 2020. How did you find out about the one that you went to? Just saw it on Facebook. I just saw a, a poster just uh, advertising it three weeks ago, maybe something like that. I thought, oh, I remember that. I'll, I'll go to that, you know, mental note kind of thing. And then a few days ago, I saw it again in a different form. And I was like, oh, yeah, I was supposed to go to that. <laughs> you know? And then I spoke to my friend and we decided to meet there. And it was funny because both the posts I'd seen hadn't had much interest. So there weren't many likes, you know, on the posts. So that's why maybe I was thinking there wouldn't be that many people that turned up. But 
loads did and people came from all over the country as well I was I got the bus down and there were some people on the bus with me I could hear them a few rows behind obviously never been to the London in their lives because <laughs> they were going oh, we're going to somewhere some square what is it called you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, we should get away. Where, how long? What, where is it? Oh, all this kind of stuff. Confusion. That's um, funny. I've been in London twice. Um, I probably wouldn't even remember that either. So, yeah. <laughs> especially if you come as a tourist, right? You don't necessarily remember things. Yeah, no, absolutely. But it was great though, because it was very clear where they were going from what they were talking about. But they were kind of, I felt like turning around going Trafalgar Square, but I knew they'd find it because it was the last stop. So it was fine. But I'm, it's so nice that people came from all over the country. And some people at the protest were talking, they'd been to different ones. And, you know, that, it was just lovely to interact with people again. Because through this whole lockdown, I've been absolutely determined to go out every day. I've refused to be imprisoned in my house. But still there's that kind of flinching away. And, you know, some people don't want to meet up in person. And I've not really seen that many people through this time. And, um, you know, even when you have conversations with people in shops and in the street, most people kind of will stand that two metre distance. So yesterday it was just great because it was a reminder that this is the way life used to be, where you could stand next to a person and speak to them. You could hug them because you were happy to see them. You could, you know, have conversations face to face within a normal distance and talk to strangers without being afraid that they might, you know, breathe on you. <laughs> and see their whole face. Yeah, exactly. See their whole faces. <laughs> And it was so nice to see. I tried to take pictures of people's um, banners. There are lots of really interesting banners and signs. But I think I don't know what I was doing. Was, it was a very electric atmosphere. So I think my energy was, I was a bit spaced out. Because I looked at the photos afterwards, like, okay, that was not the banner that I was trying to take a picture of. <laughs> That's somebody's back instead of what was I doing? <laughs> Did you have your own banner? No, I didn't bring one, no. Okay. I didn't make one. But there were so many. I mean, there was no need for me to have one. Some were huge as well. Mm. It was kind of, you know, those banners that are about six people wide. And I feel sorry for the people that were standing behind the banner because they wouldn't have seen anything. But, you took yeah. an incredible amount of documentation, though. Well, you posted like almost 300 po like pictures and videos, I think, right? Did I? Was it 300? Wow. wow. I'm pretty sure that was your post that I was going through. And I was like, well, I can't really look at all of this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I started flicking through it. I was like, there's a, there's a lot of videos in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that was the one that was, um, that wasn't me. Was that the one of all the protests around the world? I don't I think, I think so. I don't think so. No, because I saw a David Icke video in it and I don't, oh, okay, it was maybe. like one of the first ones and I, I could have sworn I took it off your wall. Did you, unless you shared did you share like a... Um, well, I remember sharing that one. I think the one that you were talking about was one that I saw Ratima share. But I know I did post a lot as well. So it was that mm -hmm. throughout the day I was posting photos and videos of various mm -hmm. things. Probably Maybe I had clicked on one and then clicked on yours too. So I don't know. Yeah, There's yeah, just a lot of posts out there. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. But it was great that people were aware of it as well, you know, because that was part of the, the lovely feeling was not only being surrounded by these 40,000 people physically, but every time I checked Facebook or, you know, to post something else, somebody else's feet, you know, I'd see uh, another post from someone like Kazri or other people just celebrating the fact that the world was rising, you know, really, because so many protests happened in places we probably haven't heard of as well. You know, because I only heard that Paris had a protest this morning. I didn't know yesterday. So it was just a feeling of, you know, solidarity and it feels like something has changed i mean I, I, don't, I think i'm saying that not just because i was there in person yesterday but i remember ratima had posted something about great things are happening in the world right now or something like that and I, I really had that feeling at the time as well it's like oh i don't know why but i really feel like something's really changing and then yesterday going to the protest and then today it just feels like something's really changed something in the world has changed Some, there's a corner that's been turned somehow and I can't put my finger on it or say it concretely, but it definitely feels like something is different now to the way it was a few days ago. And that's exciting as well, you know, to know that humanity is rising. It's like um, David Icke wrote a book a few years ago and he was quoting the title yesterday. And uh, the title is Human Race, Get Off Your Knees, The Lion Sleeps No More. And that felt beautiful as well because he wrote that years ago, way before everyone started kneeling in recent times. Well, it felt like all the pieces connected because he was speaking of how Brave New World was written back in, what was it, 1945 and spoke of all of this. And he, he was talking about the fact that none of this is new, none of this is spontaneous. It's all been planned. It's all been in the works for years and years and years. 
And it feels like all these pieces are coming together somehow. So when he spoke of the human race getting off their knees, he wrote about this years ago, but it's also so relevant for now. Everyone stop kneeling in this ridiculous, abject solidarity for Black Lives Matter or whatever else. And then when he spoke of the lion sleeps no more, I remember I've just been really obsessed with lions recently. I just keep posting them on my Facebook page and I didn't know why. And then I saw something again that Aratima had posted. She commented on somebody's post. I can't remember what they said, but she said, the lions hold the heart energy of the earth. And so when yesterday, when he said the lion sleeps no more, it was like, oh my God, the heart, there's a huge heart opening. It just really felt very profound to me. And somehow it just, in other ways, I can't describe, it feels like things are falling into place or things are happening that we'll probably see more of in the days and weeks to come. But I'm just very, very glad I was there yesterday. It was a rare experience, one of those experiences that you have only seldom. But also the restrictions are becoming so ridiculous that people are thinking, really? Like, I think some of the people are really start thinking, why? Like, you can only trust the narrative so much, you can't be that blind. Yeah, yeah. Because it was nice to see as well, because yesterday, going to Trafalgar Square, it's in the centre of London. I live on the outskirts, so I don't always go into, into London, especially now I don't work there. So I'd not been to Trafalgar Square for probably years. And just walking down the street, it was strange because a lot of the shops were closed which i wasn't expecting because in central london i didn't think that it'd be quite so affected but another thing and it's not just because of the the protests but as i was walking down the street towards it there were so many people walking on the street not part of the protest who weren't wearing masks you know i'd say it was maybe 80 percent people not wearing masks which is great because they're so stringent and enforcing these rules you know on the underground and on public transport and there's so many tourists that come to london i guess maybe not now but it was just great to see that it was so strange to see somebody wearing a mask even walking down towards the protest and then when we were there obviously nobody was wearing a mask but i looked as we were leaving we were walking up i looked over and there was one person wearing a mask and it was so strange to see them because you know you'd spent several hours with people looking normal and this one person who probably wasn't part of the protest but maybe just stopped to kind of see what was happening and all of us kind of were staring at this <laughs> one person going, huh? <laughs> you know. well we have some asians especially in vans and whenever they seek themselves they wear a mask so usually when they walk people look at them it was before of course all this covid and stuff and people was like, why are they wearing masks? So, but I think it's, again, it's part of that culture, right? If they seek to wear a mask, but it looks really, really strange. Yeah. Yeah, you see, uh, we have them in London too. We've seen people like that, yeah. But it does look strange. Especially when people wear them around their chins. You're kind of like, oh, just take it off your ears, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's beautiful, Kim. It's beautiful that you've been there, that you took some videos and then you can spread it and hopefully more people can share it around and let others know. Those who just doesn't have access to the right information. They're not part of certain Facebook groups that are sharing the truth. So yeah, I would encourage everyone to share this information as much as they can. And that's their little, it's our little way to, to help to spread the truth because mainstream media is not doing that for us. And we are the people have to do it. So thank you, Kim. Like you say, it's important for all of us to do it, not just those that you might follow that might know more about these things or might be a louder voice. You know, all of us have a voice and, and we need to use them. You know, even if it's 10 people that hear the message that wouldn't otherwise have or two people that hear the truth that otherwise might not have, that's two or 10 people more than did before. So everything counts. We all count. I think that's an important thing for us to remember as well, that sometimes it can feel like we're just one person in the wilderness. You know, we just believe in what we believe. But even if one person hears us, that's one more person that hears us. I think it's important to keep speaking out, keep sharing what's true and keep living it too not just speaking it but living it so if you don't believe in masks don't wear them walk down the street not wearing them don't be shamed into doing something out of fear because yes. that's no way to live because once you succumb to fear then that's it game over and i was saying the other day i went to costco and i was the only one not wearing a mask wow well, so no one bothered me it was good but people were looking at me strangely 
And I find that when I go into shop, you know, I go into shops most days because I, I don't tend to buy big food shops. So I go into the supermarket most days and I, I never wear a mask and I, I refuse to put one on. And sometimes, you know, people do that fear response and kind of back away from me like I'm a crazy person. But sometimes people look at me, smile and take theirs off. I think, brilliant, great. You don't need to wear yours. And if you can do that, just, you know, help one other person have the courage to stand by what they believe in. Great. Yeah. And like you said, I think in your post, you were saying that you could share your smile with everyone. That's important too, because people forget with masks, you can't see if this, you, well, their eyes smile, but you can't see them smiling. And smiling is such an important way that humans interact. You see a stranger, you smile, and you immediately have a feeling of happiness or love or joy or whatever it is. And that's been cut off as well by this ridiculous mask wearing thing. Well, thank you, Kim, for these beautiful messages and for being there and for representing many people who couldn't make it there. And that was our podcast today, Worried About Nothing, and we talk about protests. And please share it with those people who might learn more from this protest and might be willing to go and learn more information about what is actually happening and please spread it around. Please like us and until the next time. Bye.